In either 2005 or 2006, Rich Sheffern wrote something called the Internet Marketing Manifesto. The Internet Marketing Manifesto was a guide for all businesses following up on Michael Gerber's e-myth, where he talked about all of the hats that you had to wear in running a business and all the things that you needed to do when you were running a business, how complex the internet was at the time. It has become immensely more complex since then. The follow-on to the Internet Marketing Manifesto was something called the Attention Age Doctrine. And the idea behind the Attention Age Doctrine was economies are based on what's scarce. So we lived in the agrarian age when agriculture was difficult. It was hard to convey information about how to grow things. It was hard to get seeds to grow out of the ground because we didn't know that much about it. We as a species were in the agrarian age for a very long time. We got out of the agrarian age when agriculture became easier, when a lot of people knew that information, knew how to grow crops. And it was very important for us to be able to do this because, well, we need to eat, right? So we went from the agrarian age into the industrial age. And in the industrial age, industry was difficult. It was hard to get equipment to produce things. We had horses drawing plows and it was very difficult. Then came along the idea of the assembly line and specialized workers and individual tasks. Industry became easier. So we moved out of the industrial age and we moved into the technological age. Technology was difficult. Now you could argue that all advancement is technology, but what we're talking about here is specifically computer-based kinds of technologies. That was a significant portion of the 20th century. We were in the technological age when computers were the size of floors of buildings and you could walk in and actually switch the physical switch to make a computer do something. Or you used punch cards to program the steps that a computer would take. We moved out of the technological age and into the information age when information was difficult. I remember growing up using the Dewey Decimal System to look up information in a book. You'd go to the shelf, you'd take the book off the shelf and you'd say, oh, this is where I'm going to find my information. It's kind of a difficult process. You'd have to go somewhere to get the information. There are lots of people who still believe we are living in the information age. We are not living in the information age. Information is easy. The device I'm recording this on right now can access all of the information that has ever been recorded in all of human history. How amazing is that? I can access every song ever written as long as somebody's recorded it and put it up. And the longer I'm on TikTok and YouTube, I find a harder time finding something that's not there than something that is. So we've moved out of the information age and Rich Sheffern argued we'd already done this with the attention age doctrine and that we were moving into an economy where information was available, but attention was what was scarce. That has been true for the majority of my adult life. Getting attention, getting your own attention, keeping your own attention focused on something has been extremely scarce for most of my adult life and getting eyeballs to something has been the constant goal and difficulty of pretty much every business and every company on planet Earth, but especially in the Western world. Attention has been what has been scarce. With AI and the merging of robotics and virtual reality, we're moving out of the attention age and we are moving into the trust age. And the trust age is fascinating, difficult, scary. We're going to see a lot of that this year. The two largest democracies in the world are having elections, India and the United States. We're going to see a lot of vying of information and trying to pull people's attention in certain directions in the very near future with information that we are going to look at with our limited attention and say, can I trust this? Trust is what's scarce. And with the two largest democracies entering into their election cycles, it's very easy to look at what's going on in the world and the merging of all of these technologies and go, what could go wrong? with a cynical approach, a cynical, jaded, frustrated approach. And I would like to request of anyone watching this video that we put out into the world, what could go right? Just shift the question. What could go right? Because I believe, and there's scientific evidence through quantum physics to back this up, that what we think and what we feel has an active resonance in the world. And the more people are thinking what could go wrong, the more things go wrong. And the more people thinking what could go right, the more things go right. I'm asking, I'm almost begging, imploring you because there are energies and forces at work and a lot of us feel it. Putting out a simple request, change the question from what could go wrong to what could go right. And let's collectively see what we can make shift in the world to what can go right.
Thank you for watching. Please feel free to share this if you think other people should hear this message too. Wishing you a very happy and very successful, very beautiful 2024.